Greetings, everyone. This is Fred Calder. Welcome to Church at Home. Church at Home is sponsored by the Christian Biblical Church of God, and we are dedicated to restoring original Christianity for today. And also, to understand the prophecies leading up to the return of Jesus Christ. Now, we are told in Matthew 24 concerning his return, because there have been many false alarms, but with this one, we are going to see the major event that is nearly ready to transpire that will signal that the return of Jesus Christ is just years away. Now let's see Jesus' instructions, what we need to do. Verse 42, Watch therefore, because you do not know in what hour your Lord is coming. Fox News alert now, over 64,000 coronavirus cases now confirmed all around the world. China so we have to watch the events, we have to watch what's happening in the world, and we have to understand what Jesus has told us here in Matthew 24, and that leads up to the key event that is going to be fantastic thing to take place. Now, let's come back here to verse 8. Now, all these things that he spoke of, wars, rumors of wars, earthquake, pestilence, and all of that, all of these things are the beginning of sorrows. Now, I want you to think about how close we are to this again. This has happened in the past, and these are some of the events that go in cycles down through time, up to that final event. So let's continue on and get there. Then they shall deliver you up to affliction, and they shall kill you. Now that's happening to many who profess Christianity in the world. The Muslims have beheaded how many? Killed how many? Okay. Other people here even in the United States, people are beginning to have a hatred of those who profess Christianity. Right now, some disturbing new numbers on religious persecution across the world, showing roughly 90,000 Christians were killed last year because of their faith. Jenna, that's one Christian martyr every six minutes. These numbers were put together by the um, Center for the Study of Global Christianity. About 70% of those 90,000, Jenna, killed in tribal conflicts in Africa. The rest due to government persecution or terrorist acts. So uh, part of this discussion over these new numbers, Jenna, has been that Christianity is the most persecuted uh, religion in the world. And violence has come against them in the way of shootings in churches and in synagogues. Anyone having to do with anything concerning the Bible and God is counted as an enemy. Just like it says here, and shall kill you, and you shall be hated by all nations for my name's sake. And then many shall be led into sin. And isn't that what is happening? What is the one vehicle that leads a lot of people into sin? Our high-tech smartphones, computers, and tablets. You can find every evil under the sun, and they're led into sin. And sin is the transgression of the laws of God. And what does that lead to? They shall betray one another and shall hate one another, and many false prophets shall arise and deceive many. And the many is the majority of people. Now verse 12 is the key. And because lawlessness shall be multiplied, the love of many shall grow cold. Now, how does lawlessness come about? Lawlessness means against law. Anarchist, 
There are many of those. There are those who are lawless, who may appear to be even decent people in the society for a time, but they are the ones who reject the commandments of God. And what does all of this come down to? Now let's come to 2 Timothy, the third chapter, and let's see how Paul describes the beginning of lawlessness, how it is, and how it develops, and what a situation that it is. 2 Timothy 3 and verse 1. Now this know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. That follows right along with what Jesus said. For men shall be lovers of self. They want everything for themselves and not others. Lovers of money, braggarts, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful and unholy. Doesn't that describe our society today? And how people react and how people treat one another? Selfishness, narcissism, all of this ties in with, and lawlessness shall be multiplied. Because as more and more and more people act the way that it is described here in 2 Timothy 3, the more lawlessness will abound. Verse 3, without natural affection, yes, they'll have aberrant sex behavior, abortion, euthanasia, all of that without natural affection. Implacable. No one can reach them to bring them to repentance. Slanderers, without self-control, savage. Now, doesn't that describe a lot of what's going on in the world everywhere? Think about the world news that you see every night and keep these scriptures in mind when you watch it because you are watching biblical prophecies taking place. Now, another thing. Some people say, oh, I wish I lived in the Bible times. That is not a good statement because we are living in biblical times described as the last days. So you don't have to say, oh, I wish I lived in biblical times. You're living them right now. Despisers of those who are good, you can ask any, any of the students in college, if you want to keep things right, if you want to keep things decent, if you don't want to go along with all of the so-called liberal falderall and sex perversion, they even beat you up. And those who come to colleges to try and teach something that is right and decent, they're shouted down. Despisers of those who are good, Betrayers, reckless, egotistical, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. Now think of that. Think about all the entertainment industry that we have. Think about all of the multitude of sport things that we have. And think about all the people that go to them and worship them. News Channel 5's Matthew Torres takes a look at exactly how far fans will go to make their wish come true. In between pillars where gods stand guard. Tosses, end zone. Is a home fit for Titans. Spectacular grab. It's really beautiful and inside and also Athena is really nice and big. Fighting to forge their own history. And there goes Derrick Henry. In the city where the Tennessee Titans are now giants. Touchdown. Athena is ready to wage war and claim victory. And so are the fans. I am root born. At her feet are sports warriors with their own rituals, hoping to have that Midas touch. I would have to count out a certain amount of beers. It's kind of gross. I don't wash my jersey for the entirety of the season. Wearing the same shirt and sweatpants. <laughs> No one has sports superstitions quite like Martha Faust, 
starting with this Titan setup on her table. Last time we won, I'm like, I'm not touching it because it might be bad luck. I'm wearing my lucky outfit. Sports fanatics aren't changing the ways anytime soon, hoping to win a monumental war suited for Titans. Matthew Torres, News Channel 5. Now let's come back to Matthew 24. How intense this is going to be? How much more is it going to happen? How long will it be? Well, we don't know. But if we love Jesus Christ, we better be ready. We better turn to him in repentance and baptism and get our lives squared around with God. Now, what about you? Back to verse 12. Because lawlessness shall be multiplied over and over and over and over. The love of many shall grow cold. But the one who endures to the end, that one shall be saved. Because the times of trouble are right at hand. Look at it. Look what's going on in the world. Watch your nightly news. Now here's another key thing that has to happen. And the gospel of the kingdom shall be proclaimed in all the world for a witness to all nations, and then shall the end come. Now after he says, then shall the end come. Now we are ready for the one major signal event that is going to show the return of Christ is only a few years away. Now this becomes important. So let's read it. Verse 15. Therefore, when you see the abomination of desolation, which was spoken by Daniel the prophet, standing in the holy place. Now that's interesting, isn't it? Where is the holy place? Well, at the time Jesus was speaking, the temple was still standing, and he said that it would be destroyed. And it was. And there was not one stone left upon another stone. So if you don't have our DVD about the truth of the Temple Mount, where the temple will be, well, you email in and write for it. Whatever you want to do, we'll send it to you and that will show you where the temple will be. So there has to be a temple. Now notice, because here is a parenthetical statement put in here, probably by the Apostle John as he was canonizing and compiling the New Testament. The one who reads, let him understand. Why? Do we have this parenthetical statement? The one who reads, let him understand. Jesus did not speak those words. Those were inserted probably by the Apostle John when he was canonizing the New Testament. Why did he put that statement there? Well, let's come back to the book of Revelation because the book of Revelation was given to the Apostle John to be the last book in the Bible and to bring all of the prophecies together that will happen in the last days. Keep in mind that the time that John was writing this, the temple in Jerusalem had already been destroyed and the Romans scraped the ground clean so that just as the prophecy of Jesus said took place, not one stone left upon another. So John is given this vision. Revelation 11 and verse 1, Then the angel gave me a measuring rod like a staff, saying, Arise and measure the temple of God and the altar and those who worship in it. How can he measure the temple if there was no temple? And why did he write the one who reads, let him understand. Because this prophecy shows that at the end time, there will be another temple that the Jews will build. 
Now, if you want to know about that temple which will be constructed, you go to the templeinstitute.org. And there you will see that the Jews have been preparing to build a temple. But the thing that is holding them back is because they think it has to be where the Mosque of Omar is. Now, when the plan of God is ready for that last temple to be built, then God will reveal to them where to build the temple properly and that will be south of the Mosque of Omar. So you write for that DVD. The temple was very likely located by the Gihon Spring, where there is running water. There's no running spring in the Temple Mount area. So why do the Jews believe that the square plot with the Dome of the Rock is the temple area? All because of tradition. Can you imagine telling a Jew, hey, that western wall you guys like to pray at is actually the wall of an old Roman fort. Yeah, the people who destroyed your temple and city. That's the western wall of the fort you're praying at. The Jews will never accept that. But one day they will because God has prophesied the building of the Jewish temple. Whatever God does, He has it all planned out. So then, he continues here in verse 2, But leave out the court that is within the temple area, and do not measure it, because it has been given up to the Gentiles, and they shall trample upon the holy city forty-two months. Now, this temple has to be built. And here's another scripture that the Apostle Paul wrote about, telling exactly what the abomination of desolation is. So let's come to 2 Thessalonians, the second chapter. And it ties right in with the return of Jesus Christ. Because what is the abomination that makes desolate? We'll read it, but I'll tell you first. It is the man of sin, the son of perdition, the beast power of Revelation 13, who comes into the temple that the Jews have yet to build, but will soon build, and proclaim that he is God. So let's read it, Second Thessalonians 2, verse 1. Now we beseech you, brethren, concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and our gathering together to him, that you not be quickly shaken in mind, nor be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by epistle, as if from us saying that the day of Christ is present. Can you imagine that? False epistles from false apostles? claiming they know when Jesus is going to return. And hasn't that been the whole history of what men have done? Yes, indeed. So notice verse 3. This agrees with what Jesus said in Matthew 24. Do not let anyone deceive you by any means, because that day will not come unless the apostasy, the apostasy of the whole world away from God, shall come first, and the man of sin shall be revealed, the son of perdition. Now, this is going to be an awesome thing. Other prophecies show that when this man comes on the scene, they're going to worship him. They're going to think he's the savior of the world. They're going to think that his plan is going to help all mankind to be able to solve their problems. But it will be a satanic deception. Now, notice it describes him right here, verse 4. The one who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is an object of worship, and he comes into the temple of God and sits down as God, proclaiming himself that he is God. Quite a thing, isn't it? Now, when Paul wrote this, the temple was still standing. 
but there was not this abomination of desolation that came into the temple that was destroyed in 70 A.D. No great leader came into the temple and said, I am God. I am above every object of worship or religion. So that's why John wrote that statement. The one who reads, let him understand. And this is describing what the abomination of desolation will be. Let's finish it here. Paul writes, verse 5, Do you not remember that when I was with you, I told you these things? And now you understand what is holding him back in order for him to be revealed in his own set time. See, this prophecy has to be at a particular time that God himself determines. Verse 7, For the mystery of lawlessness is already working already during Paul's day. And that's why we've ended up with so many fake Christianities today. Only there is one who is restraining at the present time until it arises out of the midst. So this whole satanic system is going to come with great power. And the whole world is going to be in awe. Notice verse 8. And then the lawless one shall be revealed. Now notice when this event occurs. Whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and will destroy with the brightness of his coming. So this is right when Christ returns. This ties in with the prophecies of the false prophet and the beast in Revelation. Now notice how authentic this is going to be. Even the one who's coming is according to the inner working of Satan. Satan possessed with all power and signs and lying wonder, because Matthew 24 also says, there shall come false Christ and false prophets and even try to deceive the elect. Now the question is, do you want to be one of the elect of God so that you won't be deceived? Well, you write in for our book, Lord, what should I do? You write in for our book, The Truth About Water Baptism. You need these things so you can get your life right with God. Now notice this description in verse 10. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in those who are perishing, because they did not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved. Do you love the truth? Do you love the commandments of God? Do you love the New Testament? Do you love the words of Christ? and the writings of the apostles. Do you live your life that way? Well, if you don't, here's what will happen to you. Verse 11, For this cause God will send upon them a powerful deception that will cause them to believe the lie. And what is that lie that this man of sin, the son of perdition, is God manifested in the flesh and goes into the temple of God, declaring that he himself is God and that temple is yet to be built. And you're going to find out when you go to the templeinstitute.org that they have the plans already they are working on everything to get that final temple up and going. Now, let's come back to Matthew 24 and verse 15. And let's reread this again about the abomination of desolation. We told you how it's going to come about, that there needs to be a temple to be built, and it's going to be built. Now, let's see what Jesus says. Verse 15. 
Therefore, when you see the abomination of desolation spoken by Daniel the prophet standing in the holy place, coming in there and saying he's God, the one who reads, let him understand. Because that's when the great tribulation is going to explode. So how long from the building of the temple to the completing of the temple to reinstituting some sacrifices before the man of sin, the son of perdition, comes into this new temple to be built in Jerusalem and declare that he is God. Now, what is all the world going to do, see? Because when that happens, the great tribulation will occur. Verse 21, For then shall be great tribulation. We read that back in Daniel chapter 12 and verse 1. Such as has not been from the beginning of the world until this time, nor ever shall be again. That is something. That's the major key event. When you and I see the Jews beginning to build their temple, that they understand the proper place to build it, and we don't know how long it's going to take. There are some indications that they already have a lot of the things already prefabricated so they can put it up in a very short period of time. So you write for our DVD, where is the proper temple location? And that will tell you where the third temple is going to be built. That is the event. Now, all of those who have had prophecies about the coming of Jesus Christ up until this event takes place have all been wrong because they haven't examined the Scriptures and properly put together the Scriptures to know about the abomination of desolation and the new temple that's going to be built and how that man of sin, the son of perdition, is going to come right in to the Holy of Holies. And as he goes in, he's going to first have all the sacrifices stopped, just like the book of Daniel says. Then he's going to go into the Holy of Holies and sit down and say, He is God, manifested in the flesh, and all the world, except those who are Christ, will worship him. So that is the astounding event that you need to watch for. And you better be sure that you're right with God and Christ before you see it, because there will be not much time left when that occurs. So once again, thank you for inviting me into your home. So until next time, this is Fred Coulter saying, so long, everyone.